Oh, this is a piece by piece video covering the second piece in the Phoenix series, Standing in the Light of the Rising Suns. I am Sally Jo Michelson Cooper. Welcome to the edge of my mind. Let's jump off. So this piece, I continued the same color scheme. I was using a subdued blue, orange, yellow, red, and then a standard white, black, also black 3.0 and gold. Aesthetically, I chose in this one, instead of breaking the frame, I wanted to move the frame into the interior. So I did that by incorporating gold from the frame um, onto the rays. I think that's showing it. It always shows up better in person than on camera. I was really happy with that. I was also happy with the contrast between standard black and then black 3.0 in the ground. So the ideas behind this piece. I wanted to portray a figure embracing more than just the possibility of the day, but a figure portraying the possibility of the day, the past, and the future. I wanted to portray it with this, this visual feeling. So everyone can imagine the warmth of the sun upon you. And so then kind of the idea of this is the warmth of the sun upon you over and over, but all at once. So it's collapsing time. It's collapsing the past, present, and future. And I thought about doing more suns than this. At one point I thought about doing seven suns, but the image for that gets a little bit wild and it would have been very difficult to portray at this scale. And I wanted to confine myself to this scale through these four pieces, mostly just to see if I could. Uh, I, I set up very strict rules for this series to see if I could follow through them with four pieces and make them look I, it's it's a, a good way to bind concepts is to set up rules and then stick with them. So part of this whole challenge of the series for me was to take these four pieces that all are these pieces of transformation, which was the idea behind the Phoenix series, and then give them this cohesion through a visual strategy. And that's following the the kind of Mooka influence and making that my own and then following the scale and following the palette. And that's very different than how I used to work. And I'm trying to work this way to enhance my storytelling abilities. So we have this idea of time. We have this idea of a person victorious. And then you've probably been thinking, but why are they standing on skulls? Well, it's not really about standing on skulls, and definitely not about standing on death. It's about the past. It's about the human past. It's about everyone that came before you and being unified through your soul to them. And that was part of this figure being portrayed also just as a black and the skulls being portrayed as a black. And they just are this homogenized singular thing of structure. And that is what we all live in. We live in and on a structure. And this is kind of a willingness to acknowledge you're standing on top. And I mean, yeah, you're standing on top of the dead, but this isn't, I'm not really going for the morbid so much as the memento mori, the remembering death, to remember the past and it's kind of inconsequential whether the past is bad or good. What's consequential is what we do with the now. I mean, in some ways, the past was always bad. There was the cruelty and horror and desperation, and there's no way to escape it. Everybody has it in every family. And then maybe the past was good, and maybe it built up wealth, and that can fall away just like dust, too. So... This was moving past that, moving above that, standing on it, and not cringing, and not being ashamed, and there's no point to any of that. It's just not useful. If it were useful, but it's not, it's not useful. And 
it may be completely wrong. So, yeah, standing victoriously on the past and embracing the possibilities of the past, present, and future, all is one. And in some ways, this is one of my simpler ideas. So I hope you can um, see the contrast if I rotate a little bit like this. I really did like doing the skulls um, with the black and black. I think it was a, a fun way to use such a kind of gnarly imagery in a subdued form because really unless you're like specifically flinching yourself back and forth it's not coming up all skull for you and I, I suppose I should mention I had one of my good friends um point out to me that in spite what my conscious mind might have been doing about this collapsing of time and standing on the past this may just be Golgotha and three days in the grave <laughs> So, I might have some unconscious Christianity wrapped up into this uh, image, but I'm happy with it either way, and you can take it either way, and a piece will always be interpreted by others differently than you. Um, they are not capable of interpreting it exactly your way. Although, I do think having reasons and being able to talk about the reasons is an excellent skill to develop, and that's part of all these piece-by-piece piece videos, even though often I wonder if I could just sum them all up in an artist accounts and not take the time to address each piece individually, I think, I think it's important to try to do it, even when it gets drawn out. So, this is Standing in the Light of the Rising Suns. Have a great day.